this uh it's a dreary afternoon where I am and uh I've got the uh windows open. You can hear the cars the, without mufflers driving by because I live in the south and that's what you do. You don't you get rid of your muffler. So anyway, uh Putin, Ukraine, uh, the USA, big deals right now. Big, big deals. Right now, uh, this afternoon, Joe Biden spoke about how Vladimir Putin is rewriting history. And so, of course, MSNBC, it has, uh, or MSN, Microsoft News, is just, uh, Posting up Time Magazine, how Putin's denial of Ukraine statehood rewrites history. And before you dive into this, if you like history or you like rewriting history, please subscribe. I appreciate the support and subscribe to all your local neighborhood YouTubers. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to read this. I haven't read this. I always read stuff first with y'all. So you get initial reactions. Um, this was a pretty broad statement when I heard it. We're going to see what we think about this. As Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered troops into two rebel-held regions in eastern Ukraine late Monday night, recognizing the regions as independent, he returned to a familiar argument that the Kremlin has pushed for years, that Ukraine's claim to statehood is entirely baseless. A televised address to the nation, Putin explicitly denied that Ukraine had ever had real statehood. Excuse me, I did not see that yawn coming. <clears throat> and that the country was an integral part of Russia's own history, cultural, spiritual space. Well, it's spiritual, it's gotta be, right? Putin's speech, which went on for nearly an hour, was a twist in the long-running battle to define Ukraine's place in the world. In it, Putin set out his belief, more forcefully than ever before, that Ukraine is intrinsically Russian, and that its three decades as a nation-state have been incoherent, and that the country owes its existence to a series of mistakes by bumbling Soviet leaders. He made a series of similar arguments in an essay published last summer. So... This is funny. Ukraine says, I'm out of here. I'm going to be my own country. Russia says, you can't be your own country. We're going to invade and take you over. That's what happened in the American Civil War. <laughs> so if Ukraine is part of Russia, historically, culturally, and spiritually... Is this a civil war? I don't know. In the speech, Putin laid out his version of Ukrainian history. He started by saying that modern Ukraine was a creation of Vladimir Lenin, who carved a Soviet Republic out of what Putin said was Russian land. Putin said that Joseph Stalin supplemented Ukrainian lands with lands from other Eastern European countries following the Second World War, that his successor, Nikita Khrushchev, took Crimea away from Russia for some reason and gave it to Ukraine in 1954. Putin said that these decisions were worse than a mistake and went on to criticize Ukraine for mindlessly emulating foreign models after its 1991 independence. But Western analysis say that Putin's remarks are a mischaracterization of history intended to justify Russian claims over Ukraine. And here we go. Russian suppression of Ukrainian statehood. Is this the same article? You know, you can't tell anymore. Sometimes they just run you into the next one. While the two countries share an intertwined history, Ukrainians have been quick to point out that Kiev was founded hundreds of years earlier than Moscow, and that Ukraine has its own distinct language and customs. That's a pretty big one for uh, uh, independence there. Part of the reason that Ukraine has never had stable statehood is because of Russia, says David. 
<laughs> an author of two books about foreign affairs and non-resident fellow at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. He says that Putin, you know, let's think about that. Two books about foreign affairs. Yeah, but are they Ukrainian foreign affairs? I mean, people justify so many things. Um, he says that Putin deliberately ignored the long history of Ukrainian nationalism, including the country's war of independence against the Soviets that began in 1917 as resistance to Soviet rule after World War II. There's been a strong impulse of Ukrainian nationalism for at least the last century, and of the Russians just slapping them down militarily. Uh, they're continuing today. Ukraine's path to independence. Ukraine only became an independent country in 1991 after a referendum in which 92.3% of voters said they would prefer the country to be independent rather than remain tied to the collapsing Soviet Union. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you can say it's 92.3%, but where's that Soviet Union at today? Right? I mean, come on. They had to do something. Um, well, Ukraine as a nation should look like has always been a contested issue. Oh my gosh. Okay. Natural borders are the way you go. You have to have borders. So, I mean, it's just historically, I mean, it's natural. I mean, you can, if you look at old, uh, Property maps and stuff, it'll say something like up to the tree line, to the ridge, to the uh, rock at the bottom of the hill. Uh, and it's funny, a lot of times that stuff is still there. And if it's not still there, there's still evidence of it. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, um, it's like Oakham's razor. You just, it just always works out that way. You don't need to overthink it. Um, but if you don't have natural borders, you know, identifiable borders, I mean, Europe doesn't look at you as a country. Uh, they just don't. I mean, look at, look at every European, when you think about European nations, you don't think about Slavic nations. You know, I mean, do you consider Czechoslovakia part of Europe? I don't know. I mean, it's next door to Poland. Is Poland part of Europe? Well, yeah, I think it probably is more so. Finland, yeah. Sweden, sure. But then you get to, like, again, it's like uh, Romania. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, so, I mean, you have to have borders to show that, yes, there is a collective here. It's, um... <laughs> it's just... I don't know. It's just, it's a historic president that's been set and been accepted by common law uh, from the beginning. So to say that Ukraine's borders and what it is make, uh, make it up as a country is like fluid, so to speak, it, that's not a good thing. <laughs> it's just not a good thing. Um. Let's see. Well, the support of independence by 1991, by all accounts, overwhelming. It still masks a significant divide between the west of Ukraine and the east, which shares a border with Russia. Historically, Russian cultural and linguistic influence has been stronger in this region. That makes sense. In 2013, Ukrainian nationalists united in protest against pro Russian President Yakov, <laughs> uh, eventually, forcing him to flee the country. The Maiden Revolution, as the protests were called, offered an updated version of Ukrainian nationalism, one oriented toward Europe and democratic values instead of Russia's political system, though they glossed over the anti-Semitic history of Ukraine's nationalist movements. The protesters disagreed with the Kremlin's reading of Ukrainian history, viewing the Soviet era as more of a hostile occupation than a cohesive union between brotherly states. But as Ukraine has become a geopolitical flashpoint in recent years, polarization has only increased to the height of Euromaidan protests in 2014. And when this when Hunter Biden was over there, 
Let's see here. Uh, while well, around 50% of Ukrainians wish to join the EU today, a significant minority, 21%, support joining an economic union with Russia instead. Polls show support among Ukrainians for joining the NATO alliance was typically lower than 50%, but has risen along with Russian aggression. It was 64% wanting it in January of this year. Dude, Ukraine sucks, man. They're just following around, going like, oh, hey, well, now Russia's going to attack us. Yeah, we want NATO. We want NATO. But then it's like, oh, no, we're good with Russia. No, we don't want NATO. Spit on the American uh, uh, colonialist or whatever it is they call them. <laughs> All this stupid PC crap. Given that context, uh, Patty argues that Putin's speech should not be viewed in an effort to convince Ukrainians the benefits of Moscow's patronage, but instead as an assertion of Putin's increasingly bullish worldview. What he's saying is what he's saying is something far wider. Ukraine is not a legitimate state. Ukraine is Russia. It should never have existed as anything else. Uh, it could also be an ominous bellwether for future military action, he suggests. If you do not accept the idea of Ukraine, then you clearly, by implication, do not accept the idea of Georgia, the Baltic states, Moldova, or anything else. Dude, you, Russia doesn't have the money to fight all this crap. This is so stupid. I mean, again, you, you told me nothing about Ukraine's history that I should care about. Did they ever have a king or anything? I mean, who knows? Anyway, that's it. Uh, Putin's denial of Ukraine's statehood rewrites history. So if you, again, like history or rewriting it, please uh, subscribe. And until later, y'all, Godspeed.